Hello everyone, welcome to Technogate 2000, and today we are going to be playing Vampire the Masquerade. Um, we're going to be using the 20th anniversary rule set. Um, the focus of uh, this game is that the characters of Technogate are going to be infiltrating the vampires. Um, they have devised a way of making clone bodies of you know, not necessarily a clone of them, but, you know, grown humans that will be turned into vampires. Um, the, the way that we're going to be doing this mechanically is that we're going to be going based off of the character creation process in Vampire the Masquerade 20th Anniversary Edition and just kind of starting a, a fresh character for them that we might modify at the very end um, and have a little bit more deeper discussion of kind of what's going on here. To a certain degree, this will be in character because the uh, characters are actually making a character. <laughs> so we're going kind of, you know, deep level meta here of uh, the um, characters are going to be creating their clone bodies and turning them into vampires. They have a portfolio of information that has been... Um, given to them by Tycho's father and the council of, um, or the, the rogue council, um, who is working with Tycho's father. And they are kind of doing a thing where they're infiltrating the different supernatural groups. So starting off with Vampire the Masquerade, um, what we have here, let's actually just go do a little bit of a round here because you're still in your character while creating this character. Um, so Amber, uh, tell me a little bit about, or well, Phaedra, tell me a little bit about your character and what does she look like? This Phaedra. is your, your Phaedra character. Right. Uh, so Phaedra is 29-ish. I, I can't remember how old she is. Uh, black female. Uh, right now she's rocking, uh, dreads up in a bun, uh, she usually wears uh, a dirty white lab coat, uh, white blouse, black slacks with a fanny pack full of wonderful concoctions and vials and goodies that will help her teammates. Uh, she started in technocracy about three years back, uh, back when she was hunting down her, mo her mother's uh, killer and stumbled across the technocracy and has been with them ever since. Awesome, thank you. And Gretchen, tell us a little bit about your character and what does she look like? Uh, so Gretchen is uh, 24, 25. I don't know, I figured that out a while ago. Sorry, guys. Um, and then uh, she is about 5'7", with dark red hair, uh, casual matrix where uh, she has some gray components in it to still showcase that she's a gray coat. She earned that honor. And then um, uh, she's rocking. Um, her aviators are broken and like uh, currently she's rocking some pretty crappy foldable glasses that uh, Phaedra got from an autom optometrist supply. And uh, hopefully she's not uh, suitably blind anymore and crying spider webs. So that'll be a new phase in her life that she'll be excited to look forward to. Awesome. And Malachi, tell us a little bit about your character and what does he look like? Yeah, Malachi spent four years in the Air Force. Then he spent four years with the technocracy, focusing on security. And he is currently... I guess he doesn't really have the title anymore, um, but he was the head of security of the civilian team, TG42. Uh, he's six foot, wearing jeans and a t-shirt and a leather jacket. Yeah, I would say that you're like the director of security for all of Technogate, just still just one team. So. Yeah. <laughs> Which eventually, yeah, we, people, that's but... another thing we'll be, we'll be doing more of, of uh, possibly getting you guys other characters. Um, that will be working underneath you guys. But uh, right now, you guys just have your, your one group. So Tycho, tell us a little bit about yourself and what do you look like? 
Tycho Vance grew up here at the Construct in Madison. His mother was, and up until recently, continued to be the director of research and execution, essentially the gadget people. Uh, his father, the legendary uh, adventurer Buck Samsonite, uh, the original Technogate Team 1 uh, leader, disappeared when he was a kid. Uh, and due to various circumstances, Tycho, at the age of 18, went on a... Uh, an adventure out into the Umbra with a bunch of werewolves, which ended in tragedy, after which his mother got him a job here at Technogate. Uh, he is a late 20s white male, about six foot one. Um, when our story started, he was all into the retro futuristic kind of clothing that his dad used to wear. After Altered Earth, he was kind of into grunge for a minute, and just recently being... Uh, kind of reacquainted with his father, decided it was time to, you know, go a different direction, and he updated his wardrobe and look, and now he's kind of think about a Star Trek Discovery type character in the outfit. Uh, but he still has his, his dad's uh, gun belt, but he's updated the gun to look less, less retro-futuristic-y. Awesome. Well, thank you. So you guys are currently... Um, in character, you guys are, um, you know, kind of designing the, the, you know, using your input uh, values as pretty much the character sheet that you're creating here in order to create your clone. Um, and you have been given um, vampire blood of, um, we'll say, technically you have the ability to make any kind of uh the any kind of the camarilla vampires um so you do have like a and i'll say i mean i guess you have four vials of blood um because technically all four of you could be gangrel if you want to be um now how you know being your characters you're going to still have to it's still your mind that's going into this thing um so you can you can play around with things to a little little bit here um and and have a little bit of fun if you really want to um but uh definitely put it through the eyes of your character on the character creation process here so um so the kind of computer screen kind of pops up and it kind of gives you like a basic general idea of uh of breaking this down for you Tycho's dad built a retro cool little like arcade game version um thing that will allow you to build your vampire using your clone um and this also technically builds out the clone um so first thing though um we have the concept um so concepts is going to be um the in this primary attribute area you've got um our primary section you have concept in the very center underneath nature and demeanor um the concepts that you can kind of pick from for sample concepts are criminal, drifter, entrepreneur, intellectual, investigator, kid, outsider, politician, professional, reporter, um, socialite, soldier, worker, stuff like that. Now, these are general concepts. You don't, this doesn't have to be one of the samples. That's just a general example for you um, but gives you your first impression of like what is your character's concept so let's just do a little bit of a round here um, I see that uh, uh, Gretchen what is your concept for your character um I think Gretchen is going to go kind of um she's going to be like a fighter like i feel like she has had a lot of trauma from all the spiders and her magic failed her a couple of times so i feel like she's kind of like in a in a physical mindset she just wants to like punch things and make it go away so she's going to use her, her, um, 
NWO infiltration in a sense that she's going to try to seem like the best vampire possible, but I think she's kind of um, mind jumping, clone jumping, having a little bit of trauma that she's going to kind of play it a little bit different and be um, very much more hands on than like more just all in her head. So, okay. So, so like what you got written down is like NWO vampire. So you're going to kind of be like, you know, if an NWO person got turned into a vampire. Yeah. Yeah, um, she's so still like probably her, her like core. bodyguard or yeah. government agency type uh yeah. concept. So would you go with like uh um do you want to have Fuck. been part of because like this is like the program will set it up so that it's going to infiltrate all of the the databases out there and you're going to become like, you know, this clone technically has like this background that you're building for it that'll go into the mm -hmm. internet and seed it using time magic and stuff like that to make it seem like you're a real human being that got killed just in case the Nosferatu investigate you or anything like that yeah I'm definitely gonna go um I like the phrase you put bodyguard I feel that's like easy enough to like if they do you know like get like, you know, she's a researcher's researcher, and if they're researching her, what they know, what she knows, like, kind of thing, you know, like, investigative, so that it's easy enough to kind of, like, put all these things down and, like, you know, maybe she gave up that life and she's just, like, a mercenary bodyguard now. I feel like okay. she's going to just keep it easy, and um, so she can easily, like, tweak her records to show that without like you know doing a full scrub or having to encrypt stuff and stuff like that so um yeah um all right and then uh phaedra i see uh you have criminal down can you kind of explain what's your character's kind of base concept uh if you wanted to explain it out a little bit more i think for this one phaedra is gonna uh go back a little bit towards her roots, like before she was in the technocracy, uh, how she made her money and how she uh, was able to track down Mudden's whereabouts. Uh, well, she was basically a drug dealer or she did any type of criminal act that would get her m money. She knew how to uh, talk to individuals who were in the know to get information or sell her wares to get, get that information. Uh, so she's going to portray herself as that criminal again. All right, I like it. Um, and then uh, Malachi, I see you have Sneaky Soldier. Um, I want to go a little bit more in-depth into the, the background of the human aspect of your character? Well, the uh, I feel like Malachi is going to stake with what he knows. Even if he's in a vampire form, like he's still like, what am I used to? I know that you're not enforcing that on us, but uh, I'm going for vampire. I'm going to do that. I'm not going to go crazy. And so he's going to be a soldier first, <clears throat> and then sneaky second. Uh, so you're going to have like a um, army background history that's going to be generated for you and put out into the into the webs. And of course, uh, Phaedra, you'll have like a criminal record. <laughs> Unless you maybe never got caught. That's also... Never got caught. <laughs> oh, never got caught. That's smart. Let's see. Um, but uh, awesome. Actually, that's not true. Because I literally started this... Um, <laughs> you did get caught. Arrested. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I Phaedra got caught. Got multiple caught. different does, times. Does, does your new persona get, ever get caught? Which it makes it more believable. It makes sense that I have an alias because I would have several and I would just uh, show them some of my past aliases. Yeah, definitely. Um, all right. And then um, Tycho, you are going to be an occult vest investigator? Uh, yeah. So in game, it's the year 2000. Uh, I'm going to say that Tycho's actually probably read a lot of Constantine comics. I think that guy's pretty cool. Ooh. Despite the fact that I hate it when people base their characters out off of uh, characters they love in comics. Yeah, but T Tycho can do that now because yeah, you know, Tycho can do that. 
He's not um, you. He's Tycho, and Tycho might be. That's what he he likes doing. That. <laughs> but uh, you know, maybe the uh, he's he's not going to say that this character is from Britain or anywhere else in Europe. He's just gonna kind of play the room, figure out which accent to use at any given time. All uh, right. Um, so next um, that we're going to jump into is clan. Um, so this is going to be the faction, the well, the organization that you kind of are brought into. One of the things that's interesting about this is that it's not something you like pick or choose technically. Um, it, as a, uh, you guys definitely are the way that you're kind of doing this, but normally a vampire is chosen by that clan. Um, and so you're you're supposed to appear to a concept that you're you one of the reasons why I, I like that they have you do your concept first is that your concept should match your clan. Um, and so what you were as a human really matters um, as to what you will be as a vampire and what clan that you're going to become part of. Um, so I'm going to break down the um, clans that you will be able to be part of. We're playing a Camarilla infiltration game, so you guys will be part of the Camarilla. And um, so that does negate out some of the clans that they have listed in the book here. Um, they also have a bunch of other, like, sub um, blood, or what are they called? Uh, bloodlines um, that you can pick from normally. Um, but usually for a starter game, you're going to play a Camarilla or a Sabat game. Um, so you're, you're going to have uh, a very specific type of vampire that's going to create you. Um, there is also the clanless, which I'm not going to allow you guys to play because you don't have clanless blood. Um, we'll say for some reason that actually was harder for you to get. <laughs> um, but the because this is mainly an infiltration kind of concept and being the clanless is going to make it harder for the infiltration of getting in there you know i guess technically if you've got something that you've you know you really think that needs to be a clanless character um the one reason why i don't want to do that is because i don't want to jump into all the different powers that you would have access to because as the clanless you kind of get to pick a bunch of outside you have to like pick three instead of actually um you know just having it handed out to you by your clan gets a little there's a there's a lot of interesting things about about the clan list but let's go ahead and start on through here we have the bruja which are the rabble um they're the rebels the insurgents um they fight passionately uh they have a crazy rage inside of them that's their flaw um and they have access to a lot of really uh they have potence, celerity, and uh, and I, I and if I'm wrong on any of these, I'm gonna we're gonna go deeper into them. But I'm just going off of memory real quick here. Um, so it's potent, celerity, and presence that the the Bruja have. Um, and we'll jump into exactly what disciplines are a little bit later here. Uh, but that's usually the going to be the powers that you'd kind of have. Um, Actually, I'm going to skip over for the rest of these because you don't. Re we'll dive into those later. Um, the next one that you can be is the Gangrel, um, and these are kind of like your werewolf vampires. Um, they have shape changing abilities, and they have the ability to like live out in the woods. Um, they also become more beast like the more that they frenzy, um, which is this uh, the fight or flight inside of vampires is kind of crazy so they have they they go into rosh wreck or they go into um frenzy and basically what it is is you're like forced to go in into flight or you're like if you see a big huge fire and especially if it's being wielded towards you or a flamethrower being shot at you they they're terrified of that shit they will run for the fucking hills the flight is 100 percent. it's a game mechanic that you'll have to do um, usually that's like a courage roll that you'll have to do. Um, but every time that these guys, uh, go into their rage, uh, which would be like a self-control roll, um, would be, it, they get like a, a 
piece of an animal and you sh you can kind of have all different types of animals but um i would say standardly it would probably be one type of animal that you're starting to slowly turn into um there is no necessarily restrictions on that though um the next thing that you can be is the melkavians um the melkavians are deranged insane they're lunatics um they're also kind of oracles um so they have this or this you know prophetic abilities um they have dementation to make other people kind of go crazy as one of their powers um but they're there's like a non-game mechanic process of that they kind of see the world a little bit kind of like more like mages do you know they see the bending of reality and they see the the universe so that's also one that's an interesting one but you do have to make a um you do have to have a derangement that you'll be taking in order to be that type and that might be something that might mess with your mind when you come back to your body that's just like a warning that it says becoming Malkavian may have adverse side effects on your on your brain wavelength once upon returning to your original body. Um, then you have the Nosferatu who are disfigured. So even if you make the most beautiful clone in the universe, um, this blood entering it will turn your appearance goes to zero. Uh, but they're very sneaky, 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 sneaky. They can also um at the third level of their ability it's masks of a thousand faces which allows you to basically um for cameras and technology it doesn't work on but any because it's a um, a mind affecting ability will make it so that other people just see you as whatever you want them to see so you can imitate other people and or create an you know an, a whole new persona that you'll become um for your what what people see which will get them out of the sewers to a certain degree um the next thing that you can be is the toreador um these are the lovers the uh they're also called degenerates um and they normally have like this artsy fartsy type kind of concept to them they're um you know you can go from all the way from like likes to make paintings and owns like a a, a uh, museum to like you know loves to have you know is a serial killer that has like their room decorated in you know heads um although that might lean, lean more also into like Belkavian territory um but uh their problem that they have though is uh they can get mesmerized by things and they'll just be like stuck um and be like oh man like i can't I, I i can't you know do this uh anything at all because the sun is rising and it looks so fucking beautiful and then vape you're you're dead because you watch the sunrise it's that's that's just something innate in them that just pulls them that anything just spectacularly beautiful to them will make them mesmerized um then you have the Tremere, um, which are the, which normally the traditions kind of say the Tremere run everything. Like if, you know, the, the mages of the world see the Tremere as being insanely uh, powerful in the world of vampires, um, running everything. And they don't really care about all the other like all this information that you're kind of getting is definitely outside of the purview of 99.9% .9 of the technocracy um, and the, even tradition mages, even the order of Hermes, because normally they just, when they, when they hear vampire, a lot of the times they just think order of Hermes, uh, Tremere, because the Tremere used to be the order of her used to be in the order of Hermes and was a clan or a uh, house inside of, the order of hermes um but they have all become vampires they have a really powerful um blood magic that they use um for purposes of this game we're going to be sticking to just having um the first power of we're not going to go into one you can create like your own fucking 
uh, paths is what they call them. Um, you can do all these other crazy. They have a ton of different ones to pick from, um, but there is the starting one that needs to be higher or equal to any other power that you, any other path that you follow. And it's like the path that you got taught magic. Um, you guys technically could go really crazy with this. Um, I would like for the purposes of this just to keep it simple though and say we're only doing blood magic or nobody should pick Tremir <laughs> like um because it is it's it's one of the most complicated powers out there because there's so much to it um their problem I believe that they are more susceptible to the blood bond which is a new thing uh, Tremere, our dependent dependency on blood is even more pronounced than other kindred. It takes only two um, droughts of, uh, or two drinks of another vampire's blood for Tremere to become blood bound. So there's a whole thing about being blood bound in this game, which is if you, for every point of blood that you take from a vampire, um, or well, Sorry, it's every day. You have like three times that you have to drink. Three days worth. Throughout a year and a day. And you just start falling in love with them. So a lot of sires, people who create vampires, you become one step blood bound to that person immediately. So you immediately come off with this, like I'm kind of in love with this person. Level two is like I'm really, really in love with uh, this. You know, I believe like I have... Level three is like psychotic in like, like you are like, will do almost anything for this person. And, um, it's really nasty. Don't get blood bound people. Uh, but it is a warning that kind of comes up on the screen. Um, but if you are Tremere, your character will be even quicker to be blood bound. Um, so instead of three different days, um, it only takes two different days of drinking that person's blood. Um, so they start off already, like, deeply in love with uh, their sire when they get created. You guys won't have that uh, problem because all of the blood samples that you have are from dead vampires. So you don't have to worry about running into your uh, sire, the <laughs> technical sire that's out there. Um, the next and last but not least of characters that you can select from will be the uh, Ventru. Um, and these are your kings, your blue bloods, your, you know, the um, leadership, the princes and um, duchesses and royalty and CEOs and um, also can be kind of knight-like um because there was a lot of um because they do have a warrior ability inside of them um because they do they have dominate which lets them like take control of people's minds um and wipe memory and you know tell people to sit and stuff like that um but they also have potence which allows them to like punch really f or no they have fortitude and then what's their other one uh, we'll go into that more later but uh but the, there's so they have the ability to take a hit really well. Um, a presence, I believe, is their last one, which is like sway over emotions. Um, so those are the the I believe that's seven clans. So one, two, three, four, six, seven. Yep. So that is the seven clans of the. Camarilla that you're able to pick from. Does anybody have a clan that that kind of jumps out to um to them after getting those brief descriptions? Uh, I I'm was probably leaning. Be... Go ahead. Uh, Toriador. Toriador. Yeah, I see that for uh, an occult investigator. That's that's a good. Uh, I could see uh, the the fascination with the occult. The, you know, kind of bookwormy Toreador. I like that. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at Toreador a little bit deeper. Um, so Toreador will be on page 66 
And by the way, what I'm also using for your template thing that you guys are in is page 80 for anybody listening of the 20th anniversary Vampire the Masquerade book. Um, so this will give you a little bit deeper of an understanding. So it kind of gives you, you know, a, you know, the screen kind of pulls up for you and lets you pick out, um, you know, get a little bit more detail. Um, the big things that you're kind of going to be looking to here is the Auspex Celerity Presence. Um, so Auspex yep. allows you to see, like, people's auras, um, have heightened senses at level 1, see people's auras at level 2, and level 3 you would be able to... Um, I don't know, there's level 2... Uh, we'll, de we'll deep into yeah, the I'll to, powers, I'll, I'll read it. it varies basically like that. Uh, celerity... And then presence. Uh, celerity makes you move faster. Presence allows you sway over emotions. Mm -hmm. um, and then your weakness is a big one here is self control um, or an instinct role. For you, it'll be self control because we're only doing humanity. Um, is a difficulty of six. Whenever um, you experience something that is truly remarkable. Um, so for this, I would say a lot of this would be, uh, you probably get mesmerized by books and stuff like that, you know, is what I would say. Well, we can, we can figure that out. We can, we can dig into that more, but, um, Just kind of looking over here to see if there is. So just in general, uh, like we already said, the Toreador, um, from the Toreador's perspective, when the sun fades, darkness gives rise to eternal and wondrous world. Um, you know, the picture of the is like a um, woman wearing wearing a dress and you know gaudy dress with a really gaudy looking uh, wine glass. And They are well known for becoming like harpies and princes, and that's something we'll kind of get into a little bit later too. Hey, hey, Amar, <laughs> connect down under. How's it going? <laughs> Wait, this is... no. Anyways, um, the sect that they're part of is the Camarilla, which is basically the um the main group of vampires that run the world technically um they're the um main group that um has the council of seven they have the inner circle um and they kind of are the ones that put forth a bunch of rules that this is how you live as a vampire um and and we'll get into those a little bit later too um Yeah. So, anybody else have a uh, clan that you're interested in? Also, uh, yeah. King Corridor or Malkavian. Now, remember, there is that warning with the Malkavian. Right? I know. It's, I know. Go insane. Um, I mean, is Phaedra not insane already? <laughs> That's true. We just don't have the we, we don't have the points put to it, so <laughs> you don't have you don't have a derangement technically on your character sheet, let's say that. Correct. Um so So if you did Toreador, then you would probably be doing um like high level uh you know, you'd probably be like selling Coke. Adderall and stuff like that. 
for like being more of the high class drug dealer. I mean, I, I mean, could still see the same thing for Malkavian. Uh, that's true. To be yeah. to be fair, she kind of already has a sire, and his name is Other Kyle the Malkavian. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there is Kyle that. Uh, has escaped. He's out there. I wouldn't use it. Would I would? Phaedra, you might be able to just mix in some of the blood that is already coursing through your veins. Make a vampire out of here. Running out of samples, so I I tested it on mine. What would be your madness, though, I guess, is, is the question. Everyone is my patient. Well, they do so have, you're... I believe there's, like the world Malkavian, is my... so let's go to Malkavian real quick here. Um, all members, so for the weakness, it says all members of the clan Malkavian suffer from a permanent and incurable derangement. Um, they may acquire and recover from other derangements and may spend willpower to um, stop the effects of the derangement for a scene, but they can never recover from the original derangement. And I believe that there is a list of derangements that come with rules regarding them. All right, so 309 cents. I mean, kind of what you described, Phaedra, is like Munchausen by proxy syndrome. A little bit on the extreme. There we go, 209, or 290, damn. Yeah. All right, 290. Derangement, so there's bipolar disorder, bulimia, fugue, hysteria, megalomania, paranoia, multiple personality, obsessive compulsive, schizophrenia, And they do have like a specific thing that comes with it. So like paranoia, for example, kindreds who suffer from paranoia have difficulty with social interaction. The difficulties of all dice rolls involving inter uh, interactions are increased by one. They are distrustful, suspicious of everyone. So there's usually like a mechanic that goes with the so if you do want to make up your own, I'm okay with that, but you definitely have to have a mechanic that kind of goes along with it. Yeah, uh, I'm going to figure that out. So are you sure you want to pick uh, Malkavian then? I'm not sure. I'm still I'm still teetering between Toreador or Malkavian. Let's dig a little bit more into Melkavian here just to give you some other things like you'd have Auspex, Dementation, and Obfuscate as your abilities. So Auspex is, we've already kind of talked about that, where you'd have the ability to see people's auras or um, have heightened sentences, be able to like touch objects and um, get, you know, who who's touched this object before, stuff like that. Um, eventually, actually, you can do out-of-body experience where you can take your mind out of your body and put it into another human. <laughs> 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 That'd be really funny if somebody had aspects of five in this situation. Although, 
kind of what you're doing. Uh, so dementation allows you to make other people crazy, basically, and then obfuscate allows you to kind of hide or use, like, Mask of a Thousand Faces at three. Um, Malkavians can kind of come from all walks of life, um, but usually that walk of life has completely and utterly disintegrated into insanity, um, and they are often... Um, the concept of like the mentally insane but also there are the level of like prophetic ones and stuff like that where back in the day if you'd go like way back when they would be considered more of like oracles back in like the um you know bc era and stuff like that where uh, even you know even the dark ages i guess to a small degree that's when they started churning more into like just insane itself uh insanity itself but there is like a level of like enlightenment that they they have to them um well they do have like a section here this is what i should go over so character creation loner outsider a deviant concept um, archetypes prevalent among the Malkavian, as do mental at attributes, uh, social with an occasional social primary madman, or physical primary maniac hiding among the ranks. Um, talents and knowledges are likely most popular among the Malkavians. Backgrounds tend to either be broad or shallow, a few and deep, or few and deep. Um, Representing the way Malkavians uh, go through their own life, they have virtues, humanity, and paths often uh, tumble together, usually in the wake of a willpower doing the same. The hell does that mean? Oh, so. I don't know what that means exactly, but. The Toreador kind of says for them, um, the Toreador, let's see, your social attributes are almost always primary, even, um, evenly split among talent, skills, and knowledges, depending on how the Toreador distinguishes themselves. Toreador also have a love for culture, um, allies, contacts, resources, domain, haven, mentors, resources, retainers. All of these have great value among the Toreador. Wise Toreador may choose to develop their virtues, humanity, path, or willpower because with an unlife of uh, degeneracy, they must frequently attend to the ugly business of bringing the beast to heal. All right, so... We'll, uh, we'll move on here for a little bit here and, uh, see what other people have. What is, uh... I have, uh, chosen Ventru. Ooh, yes. That, uh, being a military man, that would be very good. So let's take a poke into the Ventru. So these are kind of like the Blue Bloods, the Kings, the Queens, the Knights... And so you'd be taking up more of, like, a knight role. Or are you thinking... Uh, yeah, yeah. That's, uh... That correct. Um, alright, so... The Ventru... Your plan disciplines will be Dominate, Fortitude, and Presence. This is on page 72. Um, weaknesses. Oh, this is one thing I forgot to take. You have, like, a specific type of blood that you like. Um, so Ventru have, uh, rarefied tastes. And they only, they find only one specific type of mortal blood to be palpable. They, they will not drink from other things. Other, uh, so when a character, when the player creates a Ventru character, you should decide with the storyteller what specific type of blood the character suits or suits the character. Um, and this is a permanent choice. 
Blood of the other types simply offer the vampire no blood pool, even if you drink from them. Um, so this can be very narrow or very broad. They don't, you know, this should be a, a role play kind of element to it almost. Um, say the blood of young, younger sisters or the blood of a nude child, children. What the fuck? That is a weird thing to put in your book. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it can be like female, male, uh, virgin, stuff like that. Um, do we, uh, uh, have we discussed a plan for getting blood? Is, uh, is that something that Phaedra is going to be producing or are we going to have to go and hunt it down? Oh, that's a good question. Actually, that is not something that is in the, uh, the instructions given to you at all. I mean, all I right. could synthesize that blood before. Maybe I could produce some. No. Um. I mean, if we're doing this vampire bloodline style, um, the original video game had like blood packets, you know, from like the hospital that were basically like you used like a juice box. So. I mean, that, that's an option. <laughs> we each have one juice box to help us out. Well, yeah. I mean, these are just clone bodies, though. Are we yeah. actually vampires? Do we need blood? We will to be able you to do stuff. We will be actually vampires, yes. Okay. All right, I want to I wanna say uh, Blood of the Willing. Ooh, that's a good one. The tough one with the bet with the masquerade, but there's ways around that. Well, I'm I'm hoping to uh, to shoehorn in if uh, Phaedra gives it to me willingly that uh, that might count. Oh, yeah. uh, if we get in a hard spot. Ooh, yeah. yeah. That's a nice workaround. I like it for the purposes of this game. I'm gonna go for it for sure. If it's a problem, we can uh, address it in the future. If it's too. If it's too difficult or too easy, you just I mean, it's know. actually really hard. Like, if you think about it, there's a lot of people that you would normally want to be able to drink from that you're not going to be able to now. Like, enemies. Like, you can pull blood out of them, but it doesn't sustain you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, that, that's a really good one. But it gives you, like, the special workaround to get synthetic blood. Yeah, and if we run into, I don't know if groupies exist or not, but uh, if we run into them. I have been told, again, by the Vampire Bloodlines game, that they are called blood dolls. So, uh, Alright, we'll, we'll, see, we'll, see, we'll see what the world is like. Ooh, it's, that's, uh, Alright, all right, and Gretchen, what have you picked for your clan? Uh, I think I'll go Bruja, then. Solid. Bruja, our solid fighter. Punchy, punchy. Definitely want bodyguard. want to be fast. Yeah. Be being fast I, is really nice. Oh, um, so, real quick, the Benchru, you have Dominate, Fortitude, and Presence. So basically you have sway over the mind, sway over the emotion, and the ability to take one hell of a punch. Um, Alright, let's jump over to the Bruja. So your weakness is going to be the Bruja... Um, have unchecked uh basically difficulties for you to resist frenzy are too higher than normal additionally a bruja may never spend willpower to avoid frenzy though they may spend a point of willpower to end a frenzy that has already begun i'm okay with that um your clan disciplines will be celerity potence and presence uh so it is speedy um punch really hard 
and um, presence, which is the ability to sway emotion. Um, basically, you know, normally they're pretty physical in nature. You can, this is also a clone body. So if you want to kind of put more points than what you normally would have, you know, for some reason, the simulation is going to dull your mind, even though it is your mind. Um, so the, um, so you can probably do like physical attributes to a certain degree will normally be high for um the bruja the all right so let's go ahead and so i think that's everybody uh except for phaedra have you decided yet can you let's go over nosferatu just in case Ooh, nosferatu are really fucking cool nosferatu are the sewer dwellers so you your flaw is that you'll have zero in appearance um but their powers make up for that they have um obfuscate is one of their powers um that's for out to you have animalism obfuscate and potence so animalism gives you powers over animals obfuscate gives you ability to manipulate people's minds so they can't see you or they see something else and then potent um, that allows for you to um, be really strong. I think I'll probably be Nosferatu. All right, that makes that that's that's a lot simpler. Um, then you guys get a good spread. So um, the next step. Sorry, lost my spot here real quick. All right. So next is nature and demeanor. So this is how you gain willpower. So nature is what you truthfully are. Demeanor is what you put up your facade. Because Vampire the Masquerade is all about kind of faking people out. Um, and in, in the real world, you usually have like what you truly are and what you put on as your skies for everybody else to see. They can be the same thing. They don't have to be separate or different from each other. Um, only your nature gives you willpower. Um, and so the different kind of archetypes that they have here, um, I'm not going to go through all of them, but basically you have your autocrat, your ar or architect, your bravo, capitalist, caregiver, chameleon your child your competitor your conformist your conniver creep show um, deviant uh, gallant fanatic eye of the storm i like that one um but so main thing is when you pick your nature you will have uh which i really wish they would say right here what page number the deeper concept of that is in but uh, but it's not that much farther. It's like page 94 um, gets you right into... No, that's the... Gotta open your bookmark yep. tab. So 90. Yeah, page 90, page 89, 88. Looks like it starts at about page 88. That will give you the breakdown of a deeper... So, for example, soldier is a nature that you could have. Regain a point of willpower when you achieve your order's objectives. The more difficult the order is to fulfill, the better it feels to, for them to be accomplished. At the storyteller's discretion, pu pulling off a spectacular success or fulfilling a, uh, a lengthy mission may well be worth additional willpower points. Um, survivor. Regain one willpower point whenever you survive a threatening situation um, through tenacity. And when your counsels cause everyone or someone else to persist in spite of opposition. 
So uh, let's go ahead and do who wants to go first as to what your nature is. So is nature the one where it's what you're actually are or right, is yeah. that the one? That's your true okay. nature. Okay. Pedagogue. Uh, you save others through knowledge. Uh, what's their way of gaining willpower? Hold on, let me check. Because I was looking at it uh, through the list. I didn't see the breakdown. Hold on. Uh, gain one point of willpower whenever you see or learn of someone uh, who have benefited from the wisdom you shared with them. Nice. Right, so what's uh, the demeanor that you're going to go with? Uh, capitalist. Oh, nice. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense for a drug dealer. And then Gretchen, what did you pick? Um, I had a uh, cru crusader from her last sheet, which is like, you know, she's like on a mission to, you know, make everything right in terms of what she feels that is. Um, and then I put, uh, let me see what else I put. I put my demeanor as like fighter. Like, I think she'll just be like, just take every thing to a hundred. And um, her concept is a bodyguard. She's a Phaedra's bodyguard. Oh, nice. Oh. I mean, I feel drug dealers have bodyguards. They should. <laughs> it makes sense. 